Imagine with me a meteorite that is four and a half billion years old, having traveled trillions of miles through outer space, survived the scorching fireball entry through Earth's atmosphere, avoided water, landed on soil, and against these astronomical odds, you are the first person to pick it up and rescue it from the elements. Each meteorite recovered is a piece of a giant puzzle. As more pieces are assembled, we get a better picture of where we've come from and where we're going. I'm fascinated with space rocks and finding them. It's been my career for the last three decades. I hosted the television series Meteorite Men, and I've helped hundreds of other people find meteorites. And today, I'm going to share how you can not only find a meteorite, but adventure too. I remember when I was a young boy scout on camp out searching for Jesse James's lost treasures. I remember the excitement of actually finding arrowheads in freshly plowed fields. But mostly, I have to blame Steven Spielberg and Raiders of the Lost Ark for sending me on my crazy journey. I wanted adventure in my life. Maybe I wasn't smart enough to be an archaeology professor underwritten by a major museum where I'd have to fight off Nazis for supernatural artifacts, but maybe I could be a treasure hunter. How many people in here have too much adventure in your lives? Too much? No one? Well, maybe you all can become a treasure hunter too. I'll show you how. When I first got started back in 1992, I thought the best treasures were gold and silver. So, of course, I bought a metal detector. Next, I started researching places to hunt when I ran across this old newspaper story from 1890 about a lady named Eliza Kimberly who had found and sold some meteorites and used that money to pay off the mortgage on her farm. I thought, meteorites probably have some metal in them. Turns out they do. And I figured if meteorites were worth money back in the 1800s, they're probably worth money today. Turns out they are. How hard could this be? Find a meteorite and get rich. I'm in. I quickly learned the basics, like scientists study meteorites to learn how various bodies in our solar system formed. They also learn how um, a lot about the interior of our own planet. When space rocks hit Earth's atmosphere, the friction causes a fireball as the rocks melt. Most do burn up completely, but some do survive hitting the ground in an area we call the strewn field. I had hunted some strewn fields my first decade, but I struggled with lackluster results. I often wondered if I'd have to give up on my adventurous hopes and dreams. But I did learn this. There are three ways to find meteorites. The first way is to go to old known strewn fields and look for more meteorites waiting to be found. My big break came when new metal detectors with bigger coils were invented. My new detector was eight feet wide. Soon it grew to be 20 feet wide. And the bigger coils allowed me to detect targets much deeper in the ground. 13 years after learning about Eliza Kimberly, I went back to her neighborhood and I started hunting for and finding meteorites in her area, in her strewn field. And I discovered this 1,430 pound world record sized oriented palisite meteorite, seven feet deep beneath a wheat field in Kansas. That was the day my life changed. News of that find led to my great friend Jeff Notkin and me landing our own Discovery Network television series, Meteorite Men. The show became a hit, and many of our episodes featured us going back to other strewn fields looking for more meteorites. As of today, 76,553 meteorites have been lab tested and verified by the Meteoritical Society and published in their Meteoritical Bulletin as genuine meteorites.
Many of those meteorite strewn fields still have specimens in them waiting to be found by someone. The second way to find meteorites is to chase fireballs. On March 26, 2003, a giant fireball exploded over the south suburbs of Chicago, pelting the towns below with hundreds of meteorites. Eight cannonball-sized meteorites smashed into houses. A fire station was whacked. Cars were hit. Space rocks were everywhere. This was big news. The next day, I traveled to Chicago, and I started hunting for and finding meteorites. A couple weeks later, my family joined with me, and I was teamed up with my seven-year-old daughter, Kelsey. We were walking neighborhood streets in the strewn field looking for meteorites on the pavement. When a man playing catch with his son in their front yard called out to us, did you lose something? I said, no, we're just looking for the meteorites. The man asked, what do these meteorites look like? Kelsey had just found her first ever meteorite an hour or so earlier. So I said, Kelsey, show them the one you found. And with her big smile beaming, she proudly showed off her little space treasure. We chatted a bit more and then we headed off down the street. Not even five minutes later, that same boy comes buzzing up to us on his bicycle saying, Hey, mister, is this one? Holding up an amazing little meteorite. His dad was just behind him and I said, Where did you guys find this? And the dad said, Well, after you left, we were still playing catch, and I looked down in the grass in front of me, and there's this little black rock. The joy of helping someone else find a meteorite, for me, ranks right up there with me finding meteorites myself. I've assembled an inner circle of expert fireball chasers that help us determine which fireballs should be chased. A couple of years back, my team determined that a fireball over Junction City, Georgia, showed great promise. Lance Schrumpf, a young man I hunt meteorite with, Lance has a prosthetic leg, a survivor of a childhood battle with cancer. Lance's mobility is somewhat limited, but that doesn't stop him from getting out there and trying. Lance and I decided to take off to Georgia and chase the fireball. We met up with some other hunters, and Lance was fortunate to find a 126-gram meteorite just hours after its arrival to Earth. Lance was excited to sell the specimen and earn some much-needed cash. But maybe more importantly, Lance was able to experience the pride of graduating from not just being a meteorite hunter, but now being a meteorite finder. Last year, over 8,000 fireball events were witnessed worldwide and reported to the American Meteor Society's website. Most of those do burn out completely, but some are worth chasing. And the third way to find meteorites is to hunt for cold finds or rocks that have not been discovered yet. I hear the crackle over the walkie-talkie as someone reports, Dave's found one. I was leading this time a expedition into the world's driest desert, Chile's Atacama. Deserts are great places to hunt for cold finds as the lack of vegetation makes it much easier to spot them. Dave Kinney, a medical doctor from Canada, had taken some vacation time and flown south of the equator and joined with us hunting for cold finds. As I approached Dave, he had a look of almost disbelief on his face as he showed me two broken halves of a four-pound meteorite that he had just found sitting on top of the ground. A vast majority of the meteorites found over the last 25 years have been cold finds 
from the various deserts around the world. So we have one hunting and looking in known strewn fields, two chasing fireballs, three hunting for cold finds. Those are the three ways that you can find meteorites and adventure. So how many people here now want to go on your own meteorite hunting adventure? All right. Well, next, you'll want to do a little more research on where to hunt and how to hunt, and then get out there. And I look forward to someday, somewhere out in some strewn field, you will come up to me and say, hey, mister, is this one?